We're all mad that the 5060 is 8 gigabytes. We're all mad the 5070 is 12 gigabytes. It seems ridiculous, you know, that they're doing that. And that, for example, I think the 5070 has like less than a third, almost a fourth the CUDA cores of the 5090, whereas in back in the day, it would have been half to two thirds as many or something, depending on the generation. Like if NVIDIA takes to heart this idea that they really are just milking too hard and I mean, look, I mean, even if it's just whatever it is, single digit percentage of their revenue, that might just start going away if they keep treating people this way. Like, what is the version of this generation or future ones where they're willing to just accept that there's a limit to how much margin they can pack into these gaming cards? Like, where does that stop? And what would an NVIDIA look like that starts playing ball with what we want a little more in gaming? I think just not treating the customers like morons is really the most malicious compliant thing you could do. I mean, so I think NVIDIA would actually be better off just not selling anything less than like a 5080. Like just, if you want something less than a 5080, buy last gen's card. Eh, Why bother? Like it doesn't, I mean, maybe for mobile, it's like maybe you need a 5060 that, you know, can fit in a mobile chassis. Maybe there's, there's some argument for that the shareholders would be looking at this and be like, what are you doing? Get out of the gaming market. Like every 5090 you sell is an RTX pro 6,000 that you don't want to sell. And it's like, I, I get that you want to do lip service and marketing to gamers, but like, stop. It doesn't like you're smothering the market for other companies that could do something interesting in terms of gaming innovation. Right now, the fundamental, fundamental proposition is that you want to convince gamers to buy less Silicon and make up for it in software. And you're telling gamers, like, our software will make up for it in silicon. And that's probably why AMD is taking some market share, right? I mean, most people buy the cheaper cards. And maybe for a few gens now, they've been seeing this isn't a good experience anymore, even though NVIDIA wants to pretend it is with your, eight, you know, your five fake or whatever, whatever amount of fake frames they're at right now going from 30 to 120. If you take multi-frame gen off the table, then NVIDIA is really, comp- and you take all the competitors off too, then NVIDIA is really competing with last gen. And, um, like 40, 70, uh, is a better experience than the 50, 60. Like it starts to not look super good. So, uh, I don't know that, you know, NVIDIA's halo effect. I don't, I don't know that the gamers really understand that, but like, that's the honesty. And like, that's the being honest with gamers is like, look, we can't, we're just not going to do this at the low end because, nothing works right at the low end for it to give you as good of an experience. So buy a 5080 or 5090 and less than that, just go for last gen. Yeah. I think something's going to have to give on, on what I'm about to bring up, which I, I often hear from people at NVIDIA because every now and then NVIDIA will be aggressive uh, with some card. And I'm like, well, why are they doing this? Why are they bothering with this? And it's always like, there's an ego thing here where Jensen doesn't want to lose ever. And he knows his company was started with GeForce. And because of that, he just can't get away from trying to still dominate gaming. And he's trying to balance what you said, like giving less silicon, but arguing their magic AI software makes it the same as AMD's with just this really doesn't make sense for them to bother with anymore. And I I wonder when that will give or, or if he'll just say not it doesn't matter this is some kind of crown jewel thing for them Um, but whatever they do do i just think like you said stop treating us like we're stupid i think that the launch of the 50 5000 series and the general reaction to it if it is internalized at nvidia uh there's probably some serious conversations going on that are like maybe we don't maybe the 6,000 series literally is just a pro card and like one or two high end gaming cards. And we just don't bother with anything else because why would we? Or at least, yeah. And this is something they've been kind of doing gen over gen. If people pay attention, like God, let me think of like when the, at least going back to when the 1000 series before it probably was even more so like what I'm describing, it was 1080, 1070, 1060. And then pretty quickly after that, there was the 1050 TI and then, you know, so on and so forth. And, and, and I mean, I think before back in the day, they would do launches with like 580, 575, 65, 50 TI. Like they would have most of the lineup launch within a certain amount of time. 
And over time, I mean, I thought I remember when a lot of people thought it was crazy the forty seventy might not launch with the four thousand series, and they they even had that lineup. Remember, where they revealed the forty ninety, the forty eighty, and then they were just like and below that buy last gen, like, and everyone complained about that. Like, so they've already kind of started it. Like, it might just be a thing where like the fifth, the sixty ninety launches, then the sixty eighty launches six months later. And then a year and a half later, they actually finally launched the rest of it. And only because the previous gens have finally sold out. It's just not a priority whatsoever. Yeah. I Because, again, per unit silicon, especially if it's like an older process and blah, blah, blah. Blackwell's a little different because the process isn't really different. It's just a new design, um, I guess, or whatever. But uh, it would be interesting to see... Um, if if in those discussions that are happening internally at NVIDIA that it, if they're looking at the like I would go back all the way to the 3000 series because it's like the 3000 series because they were facing like AMD was 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 giving it their all. And so it's like, OK, there's like four versions of the 3060 or five or maybe it was the 3080 I'm thinking of. It's been it's, it's all it's all fuzzy. And then remember the card that they unlaunched the 4000 series and it was like, oops, they, they, it was literally like. Do we have the memory of a goldfish? A lot of the complaints from the 5000 series is literally almost how aspects of the 4000 series launch played out. And again, if you're looking, if you're if you're an executive and you're not, you know, you don't have like the the gaming heart and you're you're looking at it, it's like, why are we bothering dealing with these these bozos? Like we just sell six more RTX 6000 Pros and just laugh all the way to the bank. The gaming stuff enabled. Um, the whole CUDA ecosystem. And then from there sprung everything else. There is an, there is maybe an aspect of like R and D it's like, are your gaming customers, your R and D customers? Is there overlap for that? How does it work? You know, you touched on something that I think is interesting too, is like, could keeping, you know, I don't know, NVIDIA is at somewhere between 90 to 70 to 90% of the dedicated graphics market. Do you think some of that's kind of like an insurance policy? Because I feel like when AMD was falling apart a decade ago, that, AMD's stranglehold on Xbox and PlayStation and even then eventually the Steam Deck and a few other little consoles in China. That was kind of an insurance policy that no one's going to stop supporting Radeon and AMD CPUs because actually half of the gaming market uses them still. And maybe there's something here where it's like you can't really measure it and there will always be number crunchers that try to argue it's not having a big effect. But like if most gamers on PC, if most God tier rigs have NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA knows deep down that will have a massive PR influence on when NVIDIA is used for everything else. Uh, because in people's, le- they associate NVIDIA with leisure and happiness and just playing their games. And the second that goes away and they're just seen as like a server company, I is there a PR loss here? Like even if the AI bubble pops, they know they can leverage their gaming market share into some new thing, you know? If you want to think about it even more generically, which silicon today is doing the compute? Like how much compute is happening on planet Earth right now? Floating point, integer, doesn't matter. And how much, like what? who owns the silicon that is responsible per unit compute? And x86 is now just like, it's, it's this vast tiny little slice of all of the compute that is happening on planet earth and everything else is gpu now not necessarily nvidia but also amd and also asics and also you know yeah, like cerberus doing yeah qualcomm uh, apple's gpu aspects but like not even their cores and so it's like most of the compute is happening on not those kind of cores anymore too so um yeah i think that things have evolved and and it, to an extent some of this is just hanging on to the legacy like the legacy gaming aspect of it and still wanting to like you know win and, and do something interesting for gamers Are you too depressed to go outside because of how expensive Microsoft software is? Well, there's absolutely no need for that. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com. That's right. This piece of content is once again sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. And I say once again because they've been a fantastic sponsor of Moore's Law's Dead and its community for many years. And that's because they always deliver the best pricing reliably 
for Microsoft products like Windows operating systems, Office software, and they also sell games and other things as well. So make sure you check them out, especially during their Easter sale going on right now. And if you do, use offer code BROKENSILICON to save 25% on all Microsoft software and then die shrink to save 3% off on everything else on the website. The community uses them. I use them for my new Zen 4 X3D desktop. And Jesse here needs to stop moping around, and I think use them as well. So that's once again, support Moore's Law is Dead by going to cdkeyoffer.com through the links below today. It's okay, Jesse. It's okay.